In this video, you'll see a tutor and learner practice word choice strategies. Drafting a six-word story by choosing individual words very precisely. This is a higher level skill. And using a thesaurus to investigate one aspect of word choice. Learning and choosing from a variety of synonyms. This video is divided into two chapters, with each chapter highlighting one of these strategies. Well, hello, Darcy. How Hi. are you? We're doing good today. Doing good. Yeah. Staying busy. Are you? Yeah. How's yeah. softball going? It's a lot of fun. Is it, it really is. Yeah, more than I would imagine, you know. Oh, cool. I never really played much as a kid, you know, uh -huh. but I'm really enjoying it now. Oh, I'm so inspired by that. I'll, I, maybe I'll go join a league or something. I'd recommend it. Okay. Um, you know, today uh, we're going to try something a little bit off the wall, and we're going to see how it goes. All I right. thought you might enjoy it. All right. Basically, we're going to do an activity, and it's all about word choice. So we're going to try a strategy that forces us to choose our words very carefully. I think that a lot of times when we're practicing writing and spelling and sentence shapes and stuff like that, it always feels really good to write a lot and to write a lot more, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's great. And this activity is a little bit of the opposite, where we're going to um, be very, very limited in the number of words that we use. And so for this, the good thing is going to be writing less and using fewer words, but picking those words so very carefully. Okay. So we'll see how that affects our writing outside of this activity. So we're going to be doing a strategy that it's out there, it's really, you can find it on the internet and you can hear about it on the radio and it's kind of fun. And they're called six word memoirs. Okay. Um, do you know what a memoir is? Or if you think, hear that word, what does it make you think of? Uh, like some famous Hollywood person always writing their memoirs or something. And, and I imagine it's just, you know, their memories of what things were like, yeah. you know, as they came up or whatever. So that's what I think of when I think of memoirs. That's what it is. And so can you imagine writing your own memoir, your own autobiography, you could call it. So it's, it's your own life story and doing it in six words. <laughs> Pretty short. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Part of me is like, uh, I don't, I'm not that interesting. There's not much to write about. And then it's like, six words. <laughs> I need more than that to explain myself. <laughs> I know. So we're, we'll see how it goes. Okay. And something that, that we'll also do um, in writing six word memoirs is we're going to look at individual words. And that's an opportunity to learn synonyms and kind of expand our vocabulary. So for example, we're, we're going to take one word and we're going to look it up in a thesaurus to see all sorts of words that have a similar meaning or the same meaning. That, um, that's have, that's have you, a synonym because I'm not, I'm not sure what that what is. What the heck is that? Yeah. It's an excellent question. <laughs> a synonym is a word that, that has uh, the same meaning as another word. So for example, think of the word happy. Okay. Can we think of another word that means happy? Joyous. Oh, excellent. <laughs> that is a perfect okay. example of what we might find in a thesaurus. Okay. Um, so a thesaurus, you put in a word or you look up a word, and it gives you all sorts of possibilities about words that mean similar things okay. or the same thing. Okay. Have you used a thesaurus before? Not really much at all. A little no. bit, but not really. Okay, well, today is our lucky day because we get to try that out and see what happens. Okay. Okay. We're going to use a strategy to pare down language and to have a really clean, precise outcome. So we're going to sort through words and their subtle shades of meaning. So I'm going to ask you about this first. When you think of strategy, what is a strategy, would you say? 
That was a, a, like a plan moving forward, right? Yeah, I like that definition. And so the plan that we're going to use today has three steps. And basically, we're going to take a look at some of the six word memoirs that other people have read so that we can get a sense of what they are and see the types of things that people write. Okay. Okay. And then the second thing, the step, second step is we're going to actually talk about ourselves and we're going to think about important qualities, events, people, favorite things, all sorts of angles about ourselves to, to come up with language that we might want to use for step three. And step three, guess what that one is? Putting it all together. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> and I might say the first piece of step three is a bit of a struggle because how do you pare all these things down? And then we're going to write our own six word memoir to see how it goes. So those are the three steps for um, our plan to write a memoir. And then once we get some of those on the page, we can play around with the thesaurus and thinking about um, word choice within our six word story, okay? All right. All right, so it's, it's a memoir writing day. Okay, Darcy, so I brought in one of the books. Um, this is an organization and we could actually submit our stories to share online because it's this whole story, storytelling group. And they, okay. you know, there's just so much value in having people hear other people's stories. And um, so I brought in a book that is full of people's memoirs, and they're all six words long. And so I thought we could flip through the book and read some out loud that we like. And I also did something, um, this is something that we often do. I brought, I just picked some out randomly, and I made the font bigger because that helps me read them better. <laughs> and so we can also look at these ones because they come from the book, but I wrote them in bigger type. Okay. Okay. So do you, shall we read some out loud? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you, why don't you just take one and read it out loud and I'll do the same. Many hands have kept me afloat. Okay. And who wrote that one? Nick Flynn. All right, many hands have kept me afloat. So that's something he'd like to say about his life. That's beautiful. Um, this is a more of a funny one. Girlfriend is pregnant, my husband said. <laughs> no. That's why we're doing adult learning, right? It's um, adult topics, and that's by Shauna McDonald. Say another one. The car accident changed my life. Okay. Kristen, so, and I don't know how to pronounce that last name. Yeah, that's a tough one. Stanevsky. I think our guess is as good as anyone mm -hmm. else's. Here's one. She kissed me and said yes. That's kind of sweet, huh? That's a sweet one by Ricardo Saramago. How about another one? I love this one. Sweet wife, good son, I'm rich. Yeah, that's a little... Kind of like that gratitude. Gratitude thing, I was thinking. Right? Yeah. Darcy, I think that... Step one is just taking a look and seeing what's out there. And then maybe we can move into the next step, which is really quite a lot of conversation. And for this one, I could write down a lot of the words that we say, or we could keep it all in conversation before we try writing them down. Um, do you have a preference? I think we should write them down as we go to, okay. to help kind of remember them anyway. Yeah, and we can remember them. And then what I'll do is I'll play the scribe and I'll write down stuff. And then we'll even have a spelling bank where we have the words okay. we can pick from if we want to use those I wonder what words. we're going to do with all those. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, go. we have a lot of things we can. <laughs> flashcards are useful in so many ways. I'm a flashcard freak. How's that? <laughs> so I, I have some questions here that can help us get started. It okay. says, you know, we're going to talk about rich personal topics to write about, and we can ask each other about our own lives and um, things that we love to do, important decisions that we made, um, points where our life changed, things we love to eat, where we're from. Darcy, where are you from? Portland, Oregon. I was born in Portland, Oregon. You are from Portland, Oregon. Yeah. I was raised in the East Bay of San Francisco, way out in Danville, out in the country. Okay. That's where I grew up most of my life was out there. In Danville. Yeah. 
uh, back when it was a small town. It's not a small town anymore. No, it's kind of part of a lot of others. It's changed. Yeah, and it's really, really, really rich out there now. Is it? Yeah, big homes. Man. Mansions. Mansions, <laughs> Mansions. you could say. Yeah. Wow. But I grew up out in the country, out in the sticks. Uh-huh. Okay. And, um, well, you know, I grew up in a city, but it's... Turns out it's a town. I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> but, yeah, thought I, it was a big city. <laughs> I thought it was a big city. Um, it's in Wyoming, and you're not going to find a big city in Wyoming. Yeah, no. Yeah. And that's something that's uh, shaped me a lot, is being from a place that's really different from anywhere else I've ever been. Um, what do you think are important things that have shaped your direction in life or that have brought out all these good things that you bring to our tutoring every single week, you know? You really, I'm sort of curious what, what's been important or what, what you enjoy doing. You can say whatever you want. Okay. Well, as, as we talked about it, you know, kind of growing up out in the country and like you said, mentioning, uh, you know, growing up in a, well, a town. Yeah. The similarities in there. And, you know, for me, there was just a, it was like almost like culture shock. You know, when you go yeah, to the big city, right. everything's so different. And, uh, you know, learning that you know, people aren't always as nice as they are out in the country. Okay. Out there, you know, you see somebody with a, you know, flat tire, you pull over and you help. That's right. what you do. Right. And if you do that here in the city, they conk you on the head and take your car. Oh, <laughs> that's not very nice. <laughs> no, <laughs> but that's, you know, there's your learning curve right there, right? There's a and, learning and curve. I'm going to write that down, too. And there's some sadness around that, you know, that mm-hmm. that we don't get that, that interaction and that, you know, mm-hmm. we get to help each other out. We're always on guard now. Okay. You know? You know what's weird? Um, I grew up in this town, and I moved to Portland, Oregon. Hmm. And it's the first place I ever rode a bus for a dollar. It was a miracle. So, was yeah, that terrifying? Right oh, it was. I thought it was the most fantastic thing Did ever. You? Like you hand this guy a dollar, you get on the bus, and he'll take you downtown. And that was terrifying for me because I, I was never sure where I was going to get off. I thought, you know, oh, I'd right. miss my stop and end up someplace I had no idea where I was. Which and so, could and how, also How happen. do I get back? <laughs> Well, good. So, you know, some some of the themes, it seems like, is like moving or from maybe a safe place to a more adventurous okay. place or from Danville to San Francisco. So that's one possible um, theme. Um, should we give it a try just yeah, with let's that? Do that? And we let's might come that. back to more conversation uh, if it works out. Then we can stick with it. But here it says here, it says, try your own six-word memoirs. And, um, you know, I've written down just some of the brush strokes of, you know, in the country, culture shock, flat tire, learning curve, San Francisco. I'll write grocery store. (laughs) Um, Other words that I should write down. I wasn't. I wasn't t- doing a good job <laughs> taking notes. That's all right, because because um, I can kind of see already from what you have here and what we what we've talked about. I could see th- how that's going to make that uh, that that plan that um, you know, that strategy of moving forward. Because I in the beginning, like, how in the heck are we going to do I know. six words? It's hard. Okay, so I can already start to see like you know, country boy moves to city learning oh. curve. Wow. Or something like that, you know. Oh I could gosh. see how that's going to work. You are so good because you know here's country boy um, moves to city, and um, you know it, it's true. Something you just said that this is it's difficult, and so it's a very much a higher level tutoring activity, and um, it's something if you're understanding the stories and can think about what a story might be then it's kind of fun but if if it's if it's not the right level it's probably not very fun but i just love what you just said so mess around that one down? erase make stuff fit. Okay. i'm going to try the same thing and we'll see how it goes this I said moved from Wyoming caught a bus <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good what do you have so far country boy moved to city learning curve 
But that's more than six. Uh oh. So we're going to have to figure out how to get that smaller or make that, you know. Mm hmm. So. Well, I'll tell you what, Darcy. Okay. I'm not going to be like a total hard nose about it, but I think it would be a good activity or a good exercise to try and get it from seven to six. Okay. You want to try let's, that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do okay. that. I can use a card here that you wrote some of these. Sure. And so. Uh, What's, what's an idea? What are you thinking when you look at that? Because I think it's a great uh, story. It's just one word too many. Yeah, so let's see. If I, you know, maybe just cross out boy. Country. And Country moves to city. Yeah, that's not going to work. Um, oh, you know, something you can do with these since it's, you know, it's not like standard writing. Maybe you could get rid of a word. You know, like you could just get rid of two, for example. What does it say then? Uh, country boy, city, learning curve. Hmm. That doesn't work for me either. Okay. What if we add this one in? If, if I take out country, uh -huh. just boy moves to city, learning curve. That's true. I kind of like country boy, though. I kind of do, too. If we hyphenate it, does that mean it's one word? Country boy. <laughs> <laughs> boy of the country. Country boy. Well, what happens if we get rid of this word? Let's see. Read, that, read it this way. Country boy moves. City learning curve. Getting okay. there. Getting there. I, Ooh, I don't I know what it. to tell you. What let's do you go, think? Let's go do like this. Draft. Country boy to city learning curve there. oh I love it that works for read me read it again country boy to city learning curve woohoo I think that's totally publishable <laughs> that's kind of cool because yeah. when we started I'm like how the heck we're gonna do this I couldn't see I couldn't see the path forward but your I strategy know. worked yeah. talking about it writing it down writing down on the green card you know just the, some of the words and some yeah. of the ideas we talked about yeah. would you call it broad strokes it's something like they, uh, that. With your, I think yeah. so. Yeah, and so that worked. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Because that does. It really does sum up a lot about me right there and some of the right things I, you know, I went through. A kernel of your life right there. <laughs> but, you know, mine, I, I'm still not satisfied with it. I just want to experiment with the next line. And do you want to try another version and then pick the one you like the best? Okay. See, see what comes up. Okay. So what do you have for your second draft there? I did Country Boy to San Francisco, Culture Shock. Oh. And we'll just put San Francisco like this on one well, yeah, line. yeah, because it's yeah. one word, right? San Francisco counts as one word, right? I mean, doesn't it? Sure. <laughs> I think it does for this story. Okay. I put, um, moved from Wyoming, public transportation epiphany. <laughs> I love it. That's really cool. You know, I really like your culture shock thing. I love learning curve and I love culture shock. So there you go. You can't right. go wrong. Darcy, I have a question. Which one of these do you like the best? I think I'm going to go with the, uh, the second one, country boy to city learning curve. Okay. I think I like that one the best. Yeah. That best kind of just sums it up because... Honestly, there was more than one city. You know, I did. I, I was in uh, L.A. Uh, what's it called? Hermosa Beach for a year, and and you know, different cities like that. And so, every place is a little different. Oakland is a little different. Okay. You know, so. Yeah, you know, I like it because um, there's a statement: "Country boy to city." We get the picture. I think of country boy. You know, there's an image in my mind, and learning curve <laughs> is yeah. kind of like a joke whoa. at the end. Yeah, it's like a whoa. whoa. <laughs> Okay, so now um, we're going to, to try something new. We're going to shift gears, and we're going to use the, um, our smartphones to try something different. Okay. We're going to take a look at um, a thesaurus. So what I, what I do is it's certainly not scientific, but I'll just, yeah, I'll just press on and do a search here. And at the top, I enter thesaurus. And I think the most challenging part is spelling it, but there's a the in thesaurus. So it's T-H-E. 
And look, I just put in THE and thesaurus comes up. So then I just click on it here. So just spell So you the, went to your internet browser. Yeah. And I'm just going to do this. Thesaurus. Cool. I don't have to type anything. And look, we're on the same page. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> That's so smart. I'm going to have to learn how you did that. We've really pared down words. And we've put together, I think, a really... It says so much in so few words. We could look up the word city um, and see if there are other words that we might like to use. We could also enter country boy or learning curve and just see what it says. But go ahead and flip through city. And, and what does it say here? What's this? In Megala. Intra, intra urban. Megalopolis. Megalopolis. Oh, Megalopolis is good. Megalopolis, okay. Municipal, Municipal and urban. So, you know, these are all definitions of city. And with this program, what you can do is you can click on any one of them and it will give you more words. Okay. Um, Megalopolis. <laughs> I mean, do you like <laughs> megalopolis better than city, or do you like city better than megalopolis? I think I like city better. Like you said, I do it kind, too. It kind of, some of these words are kind of muddy it up a little bit. I know. But I was interested to try something like country boy or yeah. learning curve and well, see what see happens. Well, let's see if this will take in two words like that. Put okay. in country boy and see what happens. Oh, right. did you mean country? Yeah. Click oh, on that and see what wrong. happens. No, I think you spelled it right. Uh, what does it say? Courier. No, those don't look right to me. No, me neither. Oh. I don't think it likes the two-word entry. Because it'd be really fun to think about, well, what's another way to say country boy? Hey, why don't we try oh, There's got to be. I mean, like hayseed. Come yeah, on, I, could be I was like going to say yokel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So why don't we try, um, can you enter into uh, the voice thing and say, what's, what are other ways of saying country boy? Okay. Maybe we'll find a new program. Different words for country boy. Oh, there you go. Oh, clodhopper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, okay. here's your Rube. hayseed. <laughs> there it is, hayseed. <laughs> Rustic. Wow. So, Darcy, do you like, um, instead of country boy, because if you get rid of country boy and change it to one word, then you have another word to work with. Okay. I don't even know if you're supposed to say that first word. Hillbilly? Yeah. yeah that Is might, that I, bad? I don't know. There might be people who are proud to be hillbillies, exactly. I guess. Exactly. Bumpkin. Um, bumpkin. Bumpkin. I could put that I on mine. I kind of like clod hopper. You know, we used to do dirt clod wars when I was a kid. We'd just throw dirt clods at each other because well, we never had our exit boxes or anything. So you just pick up the dirt. <laughs> I'll have to introduce that to my son. So um, I'm going to try that. You know, I might change um, into bumpkin here, but you use yours, and I'm okay. going to try the word bumpkin now. What do you have here? <laughs> I found a use for that word. Okay. Cloud hopper to megalopolis. <laughs> Culture shock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's pretty clever. Oh my goodness. But it's not, it's, now I think it's just five words. One, two, three, five. Cloud hopper to megalopolis. megalopolis. Culture shock. It's five words, right? One, that's five. Two. You cut it down even more. But isn't that hilarious? I, yeah, maybe I could add the moves to. Yeah, I like how you're just adding on. I'm not spelling megalopolis well, no, right, I'm okay, sure. Because it's a draft. <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'd get rid of that word too. There. So read your story. Clodhopper moves to megalopolis. Culture shock. <laughs> <laughs>
That's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So, That's always like, you know, the newspaper headline, you know. It almost is, isn't it? <laughs> kind of like funny. the highlight. Yeah. So I wrote, um, Wyoming Bumpkin Catches City Bus. Epiphany. <laughs> See, now, that's actually a little bit more description descriptive than the first one you wrote. I kind of like that. Do you like that one? Yeah, because that bumpkin adds another kind of, a, you know, there's it's a little bit more rich. It's, you know, you kind of yeah. describe that a little bit. That There's a naive, what's the word, naive? Naivete. 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 Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, a little yeah. It implies uh, that, um, what's that word again? Naivete. Yeah, naive. it sure does. In, implies, yeah, that. You know, something we can do, Darcy, if you still have that amazing uh, site with all those words on it, um, what was the original word that we looked uh, up? That was country, country boy. boy right? Or the term, yeah. So something you could do is you could write country boy here at the top. Okay. And then, you know, this could be. Okay, here are three different words I could learn that I can insert when I want to use country boy. Maybe I want to use clodhopper or bumpkin <laughs> or um, hayseed was hayseed. another one. Aren't these great? <laughs> so okay. this can be something like um, a, synonym, a synonym card where we have not just one word, but now we have four words to choose from. The, uh, you called it a, like a word bank? Yeah. It's like that. Yeah, exactly. A cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. A cinnamon. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm gonna mess it up. How do you say it? Synonym. Synonym. Yeah, so it ends with nim. Synonym. That's a good one. These aren't words that we need to spell and remember, but by seeing them once, you know, we're going to be like, oh, I remember that. And we can even go through these as just kind of word expanding uh, activities. It's just playing with words. Frankly, I think that's important in tutoring is playing around with words. That was fun today. I like this exercise. Okay. Do you think that doing a six word story helped you narrow downwards to write less instead of more for sure and just thinking about the meaning of that word and just that kind of precise meaning like mm -hmm. you know going from what you had over here to uh um just moved and talked about you know you talked about a bumpkin so yeah that gives a little bit more precise feeling and just more it implies a little bit more exactly you know and so i could see that you know that clod hopper yeah. gives you a little bit more of insight to what it was like for me growing up you know in the area that i grew up in and we did we used to you take a the, some of that tall grass and you pull it up and it has a big dirt clod at the end and you just wing them at your brother <laughs> that's so what we did <laughs> yeah not saying it was a good thing but it no. was a thing it's it's child it's part of your story right, right? and so you know um word choice like finding shades of meaning in similar words that's one part of word choice and there are a lot of different parts of word choice but we've been able to really play around with one of those aspects today so i think you did a wonderful job i sir enjoyed your story i actually enjoyed this was, this was a lot of fun for me thank you okay, good thank you i'll see you next week right on see you okay, bye you've just seen a tutor and learner practice word choice skills in writing six word stories and using a thesaurus creating six word stories can be a fun way to practice writing it might not be appropriate with every learner, though. Selecting individual words very precisely to write a story like this is challenging. And using a thesaurus to sift through synonyms with subtle shades of meaning is also a higher level skill.